Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and this is Cyberpunk streaming on a MacBook Pro over Wi-Fi uh, in a hotel room. And normally that would be impossible on a MacBook like this, so I am of course streaming it via GeForce Now. This has been around for a few years now, but they are starting to roll out one of the biggest updates to the streaming service. It's an all new top tier mode that lets you stream your game library at up to 1440p, 120Hz and from your own RTX 3080 based virtual gaming rig. So between my brother Pete back in the office in the UK and me uh, working out of hotel rooms, currently I'm in California, I've been to Hawaii recently as well for work, I promise, uh, but we have been testing GeForce Now on a whole bunch of devices. And so given just how hard it is to buy a new GPU, or at least for a reasonable price, and also that consoles are still pretty hard to find, is signing up for something like GeForce Now with this new uh, top tier mode actually worth doing. And if you do enjoy the video, a cheeky little like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. So as a quick refresher, because it does feel like GeForce Now has maybe fallen under the radar a little bit in the last couple of years, it basically allows you to play games you already own on the likes of Steam, Epic, GOG, Ubisoft, and EA, although there isn't any Battle.net support currently. You then link or log in to each of your store accounts as you boot up each game for the first time, and you get cloud saves as well so you can carry on where you left off. You also don't have to buy games through GFN, and there's also a selection of free games to play, with a lot of the usual suspects like Fortnite, Apex Legends, and Destiny 2. Now, as I'm recording this video, NVIDIA say there's about 1,100 or so games that can be streamed uh, via GeForce Now, but not every game can be. There are some rights issues or copyright issues, so do check that the game that you want to play uh, will run on this first. So how much? Well, the free membership tier is a really good starting point for testing just how well this works over your connection, although game performance and resolution is more limited than the premium options. Also, queues to play games will be longer, and you can only play for an hour at a time. But it is free, so you can't really argue with that. Then we have the priority tier, which was previously the top-end founders tier, and this is £45 or $50 for six months, and gets you a more powerful virtual rig with RTX ray tracing support in compatible games, extended six hour sessions and a 1080p 60fps stream. And finally we have the new RTX 3080 level which gets you the full 1440p 120Hz on PC and Mac with adaptive sync providing a screen support zip, eight hour gaming sessions, 4K HDR if you're using Nvidia Shield TV, and of course access to a faster 3080 based rig so performance should be closer to an actual high-end PC experience. However, at twice the price, so £90 or $100 for a six month subscription, it is a lot more money for this 3080 tier. And on the one hand, you could say, well, over three years, you could just buy a PS5 or a Series X with that kind of money or a very basic gaming PC. And then you would own that because of course this is an ongoing subscription. But then on the other hand, the component shortages and the pricing that goes with that. Also the fact that this is much more affordable. It's over time. You don't have to, you know, drop 2000 pounds or something on a gaming PC or 500 on a console. And so, while I don't think this is for everyone. It depends on your situation. If you already have a console or a good gaming PC, set up, this is definitely worth considering. Now as for the actual tech behind all this, Nvidia have just taken the wraps off their SuperPod supercomputers, which house around a thousand RTX 3080s each, which is probably why the tier is currently only available in limited quantities. And each virtual rig gets the equivalent of an 8-core 16-thread CPU, 27 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and a fast PCIe 4 SSD. But as you guys know, that's only half the story. You can have all those fancy, fast supercomputers, but if your connection at home or wherever you're using it, like in a hotel room, isn't fast, stable, and also low latency, you're gonna run into trouble. Now, NVIDIA reckon that you'll need a 35 meg connection to run this 3080 tier, but with the usual variances in connection quality, I say maybe 60 to 100 is probably a safer bet. And also bear in mind that you're looking at nine to 11 gigs of data per hour. So you're probably gonna want an unlimited data cap. Although of course you can go for one of the lower tiers which use less data. So I've been testing this out on my 120 Hertz MacBook Pro 16, uh, a Surface Pro 8, as well as a couple of phones and a gaming laptop. And I even tried it via an app on my 2021 LG OLED TV. And in most situations, it is pretty impressive, but really for the best experience, you're gonna to want to connect via ethernet. Oh, and also the full 1440p 120Hz mode is reserved for Mac, PC, and Nvidia Shield TV, but more on that in a moment. So how well does this new 3080 tier actually work? Well, let's start with the best case scenario, 300 meg fiber connection via ethernet. 
I left the quality mode to the default balanced and jumped into a bit of cyberpunk, which was smooth and responsive to my inputs. But it didn't look like 1440p or 120Hz, it was still using 1080p60, which actually is helpful as this is simulating how the lower priority tier will look. But then in the custom settings, I manually set the resolution to 1600p, in the case of my 16x10 Mac, and 120Hz. And the difference was pretty huge. The graphics looked much crisper, the RTX effects looked good, and it was close enough to playing the game locally on a PC that after a while I forgot this was being streamed. Occasionally, and with other games I tested, compression artifacts and some muddy textures would pop in reminding me that I was streaming. In Rainbow Six Siege, at the max res and refresh rate, it looks pretty similar to running it on my RTX 3070 gaming laptop. Up close, it is less sharp, but it's not far off, and I was surprised how the input lag felt pretty similar. Though I am a 31-year-old amateur gamer, I'm sure competitive gamers would notice a difference. The launcher allows you to enable manual graphics settings in games, but more often than not, I couldn't change the refresh rate in game, so it was tricky to tell if I was actually getting that full 120. And sometimes, even in less demanding titles, it felt more like 60. But then, over my admittedly fast Wi-Fi 6 connection, things were more hit and miss. Distant textures looked lower res due to the extra compression, though it was the increased input lag that was most obvious. And if your Wi-Fi isn't that great, then latency or packet loss can mean the stream is stuttery or laggy. Ethernet is kind of a must-have on PC and Mac in my experience. Games can also be a little bit slow to boot up over GFN, but once you're in, load times are very quick. Although of course you also don't have to worry about any long downloads, big file sizes or updates. It was also a little bit difficult to tell if Adaptive Sync was working with my display, although I didn't see much in the way of tearing artifacts overall. But then my next plan was to download it on my Pixel 6 Pro and try it out, but then it turns out it doesn't support it, only Samsung Galaxy, which is a bit frustrating, although I do have an S21 Ultra I can test it with. And it did seem to work pretty well, but like the PC, it's not always obvious I'm getting that full 120. You also have less control over the graphics and stream settings, but even so, playing games that could never run on a phone with an Xbox controller felt great. Input lag was okay, but obviously slower than if it was running locally, but even so, it was easily playable. As for iOS, there isn't currently a specific app, although there is a fiddly workaround install, and also currently no 120fps support. On my TV though, through the new GFN app, which isn't actually widely available just yet, things were a little bit less rosy. As my Ethernet cable couldn't actually reach, I had to fall back on my TV's Wi-Fi, and it was pretty laggy and the graphics looked quite compressed. But then when I retried it with Ethernet, it was pretty much a return to regular service. So I think as with many things in life, GeForce Now is a case of managing expectations. If you have a strong, reliable connection and don't already have a gaming PC or next-gen console, then yeah, this definitely is worth considering and it fills a bit of a niche. Although, of course, we do have strong competition from Xbox Cloud Gaming and also Google Stadia. But then in terms of this new 3080 tier, it's a little bit tricky because it is twice as expensive, although perhaps that's worth it if you are a keen gamer and want the best graphics and refresh rate. But then bear in mind the hardware has to match it. If you don't have a 120Hz screen on your laptop, then you're not gonna have that benefit either. And of course, if you haven't got that connection, then it looks like it will dynamically reduce that refresh rate and resolution as well. So it does feel like only in the sort of tightest, best conditions are you really gonna get the full potential out of this. But there is still something magical about this. I shouldn't be able to play Cyberpunk as well as this, or at all indeed, on a MacBook with you know, no fans worrying, without the battery draining because of course it's all being streamed so you're not really using the local hardware. It is very impressive and playable almost to the same level as playing it locally, although it all comes down to that connection. £180 or $200 a year for a service that does a close enough job may be all you need, especially if you just like the idea of playing on an alternative or a portable device. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to sign up for GeForce Now, give it a try, and also would you pay for that top 3080 tier or not really bothered to stick to the priority? Let me know what you make of this in the comments below. And again, if you did enjoy this video, which hopefully you did because you watched it to the end, then a like and subscribe would be amazing. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.